Mel Presley grew up less than a mile from the College of Charleston and graduated from Burke High School. He was as hard-nosed and spirited as any player I have ever coached. On the defensive end, he always guarded our opponent's best scorer. His jump shot was picture perfect, and he iced many games with his foul shots. In fact, in his senior year, he ranked fourth nationally from the foul strike. He played in the backcourt with Anthony Johnson, and they made a magnificent duo. In an NCAA game against Stanford at the United Center in Chicago, Jamel was voted Chevrolet Player of the Game. After graduation from the college, Jamel has given so much back to the community. He presents to youngsters seminars in SAT taking and academics and conducts clinics and camps teaching the ABCs of basketball. He is also president and CEO of the Day Foundation. Jamel, congratulations and a big thanks for your contributions and the role model you have become for the youth of Charleston. President Benson. Fundamentally mindful. And tonight, Omen Recipe Edition, we got Jana Carter talking about nutrition. Harry Cornell focusing on academics. And myself will be talking about skill development. We also have Roger Newman's book, Occam Razor. Getting accustomed to taking a jump shot, getting accustomed to playing with the ball, getting accustomed to showing the ball, getting your legs into it, and you make adjustment after every shot. So the shot went too far, you did what? Put too what? Much what? Legs. And went too short, you didn't put enough what? Legs. And went far right, you did what? Your, your follow through went here. Went far left, follow through went here. Okay? So make a gesture of every shot. Don't get too shot, shoot shot. Okay? The oatmeal recipe has three main ingredients that's vital to athletes' success. Skill development, academics, and education. Hear all about it on Day TV. In the oatmeal recipes edition, which includes skill development, nutrition, and education. The skill development component is brought to you by President Training Systems. In this edition we'll talk about ball handling, the three different type of ways uh, to dribble between the legs, behind the back, crossover, the two type of ways to dribble, low case I's and low case V. In this segment, the three type of dribbles to use are between the legs, which requires a low case V, Behind the back, which requires a low case V. And crossover, which requires a low case V. Okay? Eyes, capital I's. The ball comes above your knees. It's considered a capital I. My body structure. My elbows are bent. And my knees are straight in the capital I. And the low case I. My elbows are straight and my knees are bent. This is the most effective way to make a dribble, especially going through the lane. Check the body structure here. My knee is in a 90 degree angle. My hip is in an acute angle. Okay? Right angle dribbling is incorrect. Obtuse angle dribbling is incorrect. Have to be in an acute angle to be effective. In our training approach, we try to make put a lot of emphasis on developing the forearm while we're handling the ball. So different drills we use, as far as single-handed, lowercase v's, uh, left hand and right handed, also double-handed v's, strengthen the core muscles up that's needed for a strenuous course of game like basketball. Training approach, we put cones down 
and try to demonstrate ways and maneuvers on how to sell the defense and work on different ways on how to make the in and out dribble much more effective. is me being an offensive player have to identify the midpoint between the defender and the offensive guy. The cone here indicates the midpoint where I'm trying to get my defender to commit to to open up my space. Here he's in my space right now. He's in my avenue where I want to go. I can't go here because I go out of bounds and I can't go there because I go into traffic. So the closest spot I get him to commit to is the cone. Once I get him there, the avenue that I need kind of opens up. And the most effective way I get that done is by the in and out dribble. As you see in the clip, my right foot is pointed to the cone where I want to go. I can't make the move laterally here. Alright, it's got to be a north, south, to the point. The toes pointing to the cone, which allows this maneuver into the basket. Drills uh, is, a, is a drill that's used, especially on the fast break, where you can get an offense off its, off its rocker. So we're gonna do pound in and out, pound in and out, in and out, into pull up jumpers. is to cause it's like, you know, playing the PlayStation. It's almost like having the pads on your fingertips, getting the touch pads coming together. So when he's doing in and out and go right up into the shot, you know, it's almost like coming through the lane, dribbling, going up into the shot. So it works on the touch pads of the hands and sensory of the hands when you're dribbling. What you got, Luke?
Protein is also important. A lot of people think that it's more important than the other nutrients, but it's not. It's just as important as everything else. And you need to have enough protein to make sure that you can perform at your best. So let's talk about foods that contain protein. This is going to be meats, like chicken, beef, eggs, peanut butter, nuts, beans. Those sorts of things contain protein. And when I talk about beans, I don't mean like green beans. I mean the bean called legumes, and that's going to be black beans, pinto beans, lima beans. Peanuts are actually also a legume; they're not a nut. So those are those are the some of the types of foods that'll give you protein. So again, there are some protein sources that are better for you than others. Obviously, legumes and nuts and seeds; those are going to be a really good source of protein for you. Whereas you want to watch out for a lot of the high-fat meats like steak and bacon and those sorts of of meats. So that is the protein category. Fat tends to get a bad reputation, but there are some fats that are actually really good for you, some fats that are terrible for you, so let's talk about the different kinds. Trans fats, saturated fats, and unsaturated fats. Those are the three main types of fats that are in the foods that you eat and they all have a different effect on the inside of your body, such as your arteries and your blood vessels. So if you eat too much trans fat or too much saturated fat, it can start to build up and accumulate inside your blood vessels and it could lead to heart disease, heart attack, stroke, those sorts of things. So of course you don't want those things to happen, but you do want to have enough fat in your diet in order to be able to have your body perform at its best. So let's talk about the sources of these types of fats. The trans fats are going to come from processed and prepared foods. So that could be something like a box of crackers or some fast food or something like that. It's not always going to be in everything that's processed or prepared, but you do have to look at the food labels to determine whether there is trans fat in the food or not. Then there's saturated fat. Saturated fat is not so great. It's not horrible like trans fat can be, but it's um, but it's not so good either. So if you uh, watch out for the saturated fats in your diet, that's going to be important as well. And food sources of saturated fats are going to be high fat meats like steak, again bacon, processed meats like bologna, salami, um, butter. Those are some sources of saturated fats. And then the unsaturated fats are actually very good for you. Those are heart protective. So those foods are going to be, again, nuts and seeds, mainly plant sources of fat. So avocado, olives, olive oil, corn oil, canola oil, um, margarine, tub margarines that are made from those types of oil. Those are some sources of unsaturated fat. The only source of unsaturated fat that is not a plant food is going to be fish. So if you like to eat fish, I say have it at least twice a week and that's going to be a really great source of unsaturated fat and a good source of protein for you. eligibility rules for the class of 2016 and they've added a couple couple other things that, that didn't exist in the previous years. Now they have three act, three actual groupings. They have the full qualified, which are kids that meets all NCAA standards on the sliding scale as far as GPA and test score. Then you have academic red shirt. An academic red shirt is a kid who meets one or the other. He meets the requirement on the slide scale, but he's not eligible to compete. He may receive athletic aid, but he can't participate on the field that year. That following year, he has to have a 2.0 in the core and a 24 credit hours, and he'll be eligible to participate the following year, but he still will be able to receive athletic aid. A non-qualified is a kid that doesn't meet anything on the slide scale. Uh, he doesn't have the 2.3, he doesn't have the 1080, he doesn't have the 2.0, he doesn't have the 1020 to be an academic red shirt. 
which means that this kid is a non-qualified, which means he's ineligible to participate at the Division I level. Division II, NCAA Division II rules remain consistent. Uh, with the minimum of a 2.0 to 820 on the SAT, a uh, student athlete is still uh, eligible to participate at the Division II level. There is no sliding scale at the Division II level. Uh, there is a mandatory minimum at the Division II level with GPA, grade point average, ACT, and SAT scores. At the Division III level, there is no initial eligibility rules because Division III, they don't offer athletic aid. There are 16 core classes that a student athlete must must hold in, in, in a, a, a minimum grade point average of a 2.0 in these core classes. Now, in these 16 core classes, make it consist of four English, three math, two science, two social science, two natural science, one additional English, math, or science, and three other courses from any of the above areas. Now these 16 core courses may come from the list of approved core courses that submitted to you, that submitted to the NC2A by your homeschool guidance counselor or administrator or liaison to the NC2A. Once these courses are submitted to the NC2A, the NC2A sends it back to the school and lets the school know what's being accepted by them and what's not being accepted by them. If your child's transcript and the list of approved core courses does not match, which means if your child takes a class that's not on the list of approved core courses, it can not come to one of the Oh man, I'm so full from all that knowledge, the nutrition and skill development, education knowledge, I'm so full from it. Hey, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we got Ford House doing a feature with Luther Broughton. We'll be right back, Day TV. Hillary Smith, I go to Ashley Hall and I'm 11. I'm Nate Leroy, I go to Akron Magna High School and I'm 15. Travis Smith, 22 years old from Mercy University. And AJ James, class of 2014, Portugal High School. I'm My name is uh, Donnie Anderson, uh, my son is uh, Baptiste. Uh, played uh, basketball at Fort Dorchester and also uh, did travel basketball with Jamil for the years and a YBOA. Well, um, I'm Khalil Davis. I'm a freshman at uh, University of South Carolina, Sakahatchee, and um, I graduated from Charleston Collegiate. I used to play AAU for 10 days. I'm Zanari. I go to River Oaks Middle. I'm James Allen Joe Weswick. Um, my son, uh, Joseph. Uh, Played for Port of God, played for uh, AAU teams. Hey, how you doing? My name is Elton Brooks. I'm from Clarkston, Florida. And I'm now here in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm 23 years old. And I'm just searching for a way to build my dream. My name is Tiffany Maxwell, and I have a son, Christopher Maxwell, who has been participating in this program for like nine months now. And I promise any coach that will, they will never have no problem out of me. They can always expect it. Expect 300% out of me. Right. Always. Right. right. Level. And, um, uh, and Jamel was able to give him the, the, uh, the fundamentals. In high school, get your grades because if you don't get your grades, then you can't go to a big school. And second of all, always work on your game because in college, everything is a lot bigger and a lot faster. I run a tight schedule, you know what I'm saying? I'm a student, I run two businesses. Um, without that discipline, I won't be able to do what I do. So I impose it on my son. I want to go from the same type of discipline environment to Jamil's training, which is a discipline environment. You know, if you don't properly rest, you don't go to bed at night at the right time, you ain't gonna have the energy level to come here and give him the performance that he wants during training. I feel like I have to prove everything to a chance. I just need another chance and I can do anything. Right, another chance to play basketball, walk on, just a jersey. That's it, that's all I ask for, a practice jersey. I 
tell us a little bit about Ken Hoy and um and and, and, and a little bit about the, the city that your, your fans don't know about. Oh, man, Ken Hoy, UC South Carolina, one of the smallest uh, in the state, man. Uh, you know a little bit about it. You got family down there, but it was uh, it was different, you know. One of the top guys in this area for this craft. Google. I just gotta find his office. in the you know the best doctors in America book so I, I've had a lot of a lot of good fortunes happen to me and and we've been successful here and I think we've taken care done provided good care for a lot of a lot of a lot of moms here in the the low country right <clears throat> so we're gonna get off subject about MUSC and, and talk a little bit and um, just talk about you know just you and uh, the day foundation because 
you know, um, we first met when uh, Sarah Newman was an athlete, and she started coming to my program, and you know, we developed uh, a great relationship. Um, talk about a little bit about. Let's give Sarah a little, a little shout out, a little shout out, and talk about you know, talk about your, your, <clears throat> your as a parent, you know, what we did, um, you know, through Day Foundation, our training, our approach, and then talk about you know things that Sarah's doing. She just graduated this past year, so you know, talk about those things. Yeah, my. Uh uh, I have two older sons uh, who uh, were good athletes, but um, um, never had the competitive drive of my uh, youngest daughter, uh, Sarah, uh, who loved sports, but particularly loved basketball. And uh, she started playing at a young age. I, of course, thrilled me. Um, and um, probably when she was, I forget how, she might have been in sixth or seventh sixth, grade. Seventh I can't grade. remember which one. Um, uh, we heard about uh, Day Foundation and you and uh, the work that you were doing as in training uh, people, and uh, thought that would be. Uh, I, I knew about you from basket, you know, from the College of Charleston, a big College of Charleston Cougar fan. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we sought you out and uh, enrolled, uh, got Sarah started with the Day Foundation, and from day one, uh, she loved the experience, and I could tell sitting there in the in the stands that you know that she was. She was learning things, picking up skills uh, that I'd never be able to teach her and that would take a long time coming for her. Uh, so with, with your help and her drive and her, her skill, um, Sarah really developed as a basketball player. She ended up uh, going to Academic Magnet High School, which is not known for its basketball program, but she um, uh, did very well there, and uh, they were they were a playoff team. You know when she was mm -hmm. she was there, and uh, she ended up being all region. Um, and uh, she went to NYU uh, and just graduated with a degree in global public health, and uh, is working on uh, getting into medical school now. So she she followed she's followed my interest in medical school. Takes off, and it's the story about a doctor who's trying to help this girl keep away from her father who's out you know he's trying to put her under wraps keep her away from the drug smugglers uh, and the Colombians basically and also to keep her away from the federal uh, grand jury that wants to subpoena her for her testimony because right. she she knows all these guys We're here today with Mr. Ted Valentine after our um, Best Mac committee meeting. Uh, Mr. Valentine, we really thank you, you know, thank you for you know, the time coming out and supporting us. We really appreciate that. But in our mission of using Best Macker to um, stay relevant in the community and educate an opportunity for parents about student athletes, can you tell the community and the, and the people about the skill level of, of what's needed? You, you see the epitome at a high skill level. Can you tell them how important it is um, to develop that skill level and, and level best you see every day as, as effective? Yes, um, I think that, uh, that Gus Macker would definitely would benefit because it is uh, basic fundamentals. Um, the things that I see like in my game is that uh, free throw shooting is not an art anymore. I mean uh, everybody wants to dunk, everybody wants to wants to have the highlight reel and the, uh, the student athletes that I work with uh, they seem to me that they spend less time on the uh, fundamentals and the development and, and and basically me being the next coach next teacher it all starts at a young age about how to dribble uh, how to keep your hand up uh, I mean how to keep your head up should I say uh, passing the basketball uh, seems to me that gets to be less of an art of passing the ball to uh, other players on the floor because I see like all the time where you don't where you end up with more of a team, like a player dominance, more than anything else. Right, right. Uh, where you always have this one go-to guy. Well, uh, the Gus Mas Macker is not an NBA development type. Uh, right. The NBA, which I've reviewed a few games, is that you more have a go-to player to go to. And on the, and on the Gus Macker is more of a team oriented that you play as a team and you develop your skills as a player on the team in uh, one unit as far as like three players is uh, one unit just right. and you should play that way as one unit in the games I see that you might not get
five players on a unit and you have more individuals. So, right, right. So it's basically like what I've seen just about. And when we talked about it briefly, it's about the, the North, Notre Dame Baylor game, Baylor game. But the free throws, 64, 70 for the total game, missing six free throws the whole game. So skill development, especially in, in, from the male standpoint, needs to be enhanced. And that's what we do as a whole, using Gus Macker to stay relevant to do that. So we just wanted to say, you know, thank you. Appreciate you, you coming out to the committee. We know traveling all over the country and you're here today, you know, at our committee meeting because you believe in what we do. And all we can do is say, you know, thank you for your time. Well, I'm glad that, you know, I'm really part of it. Uh, everything I've read about Gus Macker is very successful everywhere else. It'd be nice to bring something here to the low country, something that they can be great about. Thank you. Welcome back. In our next segment, we have Laura Dollar from InTown.com. She'll be with Kathleen Cartland talking about the WaterSportsWeek.com, actually. The event takes place September 5th through the 14th. We also have Quentin Washington giving his take on his past interviews. Be right back. Day TV. time you miss, it's an adjustment to get better. You see what I'm saying? But if you don't fall in love with the process of getting better, you're not going to get better because you're not going to be able to accept the failures and the hard times that come with it. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Most kids will play this game at home getting ready for Super Bowl. Y'all here working on y'all games. So you got to fall in love with the process of getting better. That make sense? So you got to be accepting failures. Accepting failures means that I'm going into this left hand layup like it's a right hand layup, like I already made 10 in a row already. I'm not going in like this. That's how you go in, that's how you, that's how you miss shots. You got it? Let's go. Huh. Hello everyone, I'm Quentin Washington, the creator, host, and executive producer of Quentin's Pulse-Ups on YouTube. I interview prominent Charlestonians and South Carolinians one-on-one -on, -one on a weekly basis. And since May of 2012, I've interviewed people such as Larry Kabrowski, Robert Ford, Thomas Ravenel, and of course, Jermel President. Uh, recently, I've done a, a couple of exclusive interviews for my web show, including interviews with former state representative Floyd Breland, who's really a household name in the House of Representatives. Um, Floyd was very good to talk to. 
he was easy to talk to, he was very informative, and he was very um, knowledgeable about what's going on in politics right now. Uh, he's currently working for the College of Charleston under its Call Me Mister program, which is a great outreach program for many young men who are trying to uh, get to college or, you know, pursue other programs uh, if they're not going to college. Um, he was very, very wise, and I learned about him a lot. I learned that he was, you know, the principal at Burke. I learned that he was an assistant principal as well, and that he also, you know, attended a couple of... Uh, colleges here in South Carolina as well. Um, he was just awesome to talk to and I enjoyed talking to him. Hi, good afternoon. This is Laura with InTown.com keeping you in the know on where to go. I'm here today with uh, the beautiful Kathleen Cartland uh, here at the uh, Charleston Maritime Center. What a gorgeous backdrop to start telling you about the amazing event coming up that her organization is planning, Charleston Water Sports Week. Um, Kathleen, so why... So, uh, Charleston has so many different events. Uh, why add another one? What, what's special about Charleston Water Sports Week? Well, we are finding that, um, being a top destination, that people are looking for reasons to come to Charleston, and water is one of our biggest assets that we have. So why not create an entire event around our greatest asset, which is water, and really expand on that with water sports, um, whether it's a competitive sport, recreational enthusiasts coming out, or just if you like to just have leisure fun on the water, for instance, a dinner cruise. Nice. But there's so many opportunities out there, and we want to share those with our visitors. Of course, we are promoting it to our visitors, and it turns out that it happens to be at a great time. It's right when um, Labor Day is over, and kids are going back to school, and sometimes people aren't thinking about vacationing. So we're hoping that people will come out and take advantage of taking a three or four hour drive and coming to Charleston for a weekend and having fun. Well, and then the great thing is it's, you know, although we always talk about Charleston being tourists, this is actually an event that locals can totally participate oh. in. In fact, you guys have um, on your website, um, which is Charleston, www.charlestonwatersports.com. It's uh, watersportsweek.com. Right, that you can go on there, and there's hundreds of different activities and events that people can partake in, um, including a big expo that's going to happen on the 12th to the 14th, right? Exactly. In fact, we're at the Maritime Center, and that's where the expo will be held, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're going to have a splash-off Friday evening from 5 to 8 with happy hour on the harbor, and we'll have entertainment, food, um, beverage trucks and um, just a lot of different activities taking place in the water. Um, Saturday we're going to get right back into it again with activities in the water and um, have a radio remote and a couple other fun things going on. And then Sunday, certainly come out for Sunday, our last day, that's September the 14th, we'll have brunch by the sea and then we'll have some really interesting um, activities for the kids including a fishing simulator which I think is going to be nice. a, a really great, <laughs> great addition. Oh, I completely agree. And, and I love, I mean, I don't think you can live in Charleston without having an innate love for the water because no matter where you go, you seem to touch it or, or feel it or go by it. Um, but there's often, what I love about the program that you guys are setting up is that there's so many different activities that you can partake in and, and some of the activities are free some of them are reduced and i just love like you have the parasailing that you're going to mm -hmm. have or you can go out on the um, sailboats with college mm -hmm. of charleston um and i just think that's a wonderful experience for everyone and that they're just going to be we need to celebrate charleston's waterways i think so too and this of course is our inaugural year but we hope to expand on it every year and um, eventually make it the um the water sports week for um, the southeastern region or maybe the nation who knows <laughs> love it love it well thank you so much kathleen for having thanks us for out. having us and um, we can't wait uh, but make sure you put that on your calendar and of course you can find that information on intown.com but we'll see you at water sports week Hello viewers, this is Willie Hayward, CEO of Ford House. I'm here with Mr. Jamel, President of the Day Foundation, and Mr. Scott Mac Mr. Scott <laughs> Macker with Gus Macker. As you can see, he is ready I'm a little to crazy. steal the ball, but what he has stolen is the city of Charleston, and it will be here July 18th through the 20th. You can thank you, Willie, for making it happen. Appreciate it. Ford House people.
Thank you very much, Jamel. Excited yes. to be here. Definitely, definitely. We're excited to have you guest mentor from here. Um, well, we came in on yesterday. Can you, you know, tell us? Tell the audience about about Charleston and, and, and what we have to, to offer here. Well, I think one thing I noticed is you have a great food. The hospitality of the South is awesome. The southern food I get kind of fired up about. Also, the weather is awesome. Uh, we're from Michigan, and most of our events are in the Midwest. We don't get to see the tropical type space that you have, and maybe you don't see that. But from our eyes, that's one thing you offer a lot of. I think teams that come will really know that you're in the basketball community and the Day Foundation does a lot of good things for kids in the community. I think that will come out as part of this and the fact you brought the whole community together. And North Charleston has a lot to offer. I think the Parks and Rec Department joining you. I'm fired up about it because first time out I'm looking for the Pied Piper and I think that you are the Pied Piper and uh, we'll make Macker go here and really make it part of your community for years to come. So that's why I'm excited about it. I know I said a lot, but I'm excited. No, 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 that was perfect. I'm a little hyped. That's perfect. But, um, you know, we talked about, you know, we, we also always going back and forth about basketball talking. One of my main things I'm trying to do in this community is increase the, the, the skill development. Mm -hmm. uh, we met with um, Coach Wojcik from the College of Charleston yesterday. Can you touch base on what he, he talked about? Well, one of the things he had mentioned is that here in South Carolina, you need to have more basketball awareness. Uh, the players aren't skilled enough yet, maybe. Maybe they're missing some elements of their game that he would appreciate that being brought out in an event like Macker can bring more awareness to basketball in general, and hopefully with your day foundation, you can reach out and train those athletes to be better as they go on to play beyond their middle school and high school careers. And that's just what we're trying to do. Our ultimate goal is to, you know, bring them back here on July 19th and 20th, 20th, and then educate the community and the parents on how this thing is really done. And, 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 and the macro being, as Ed says, the, the Cadillac of three tournaments, where we're happy to bring that to our city and see how we can be effective in, in doing that. Well, like I said, I think you're the right guy to start it off with. You're going to be passing the ball around to different coaches and getting them involved. Any reach out you can do to get this awareness out that we're coming, I think will really get people fired up. I think the town will really get it behind this event, and I'm glad you're the one to bring it. I mean, thank you, Gus, for coming to Charleston. I look forward to Thanks for the hospitality. I love the sweet tea, and uh, the food is killing me. I'm loving it. <laughs> Definitely. In a good way. Thank you. Fired up. So the dark community is just not a play. The focus is to educate the community, give a different view of the student athlete. That's the purpose of this documentary. So stay tuned, stay informed, as we shine light on both sides of Calhoun, brought to you by Forward House. Thanks for tuning in to Day TV. Next week, we'll have Tony Shufo talk about the great highlights of College Charleston history basketball. We also have BJ Mackey talk about his career and now current assistant coach at Charleston Southern. We also have Laura Dolloff of InTown.com. She will have Ben Jammin on set talking about on purpose adventures. We'd like to thank all our guests for being involved Come in and take a time out to spend with Day TV. We'll see you next week.
favorite angle on my knees in the lower case. What type of angle is this? Up tilt? What type of is that? Thing? Okay, what's, what's this thing?
You hear it on Day TV, Occam's Razor, Roger Newman. Fundamentally mindful. Fundamentally mindful. Be right back.